Welcome to Burgess Fine Arts. I'm Bill Burgess, president and founder of the collection. We're located at 10 Barclay Street in New York City. Today, I have the honor of having Steve Tyson, the cousin of one of our artists, Abel Denight, here with me to discuss the artist's work. Steve, welcome to the Burgess Group. Hi, Bill. Good to be here with you. Uh, Abel's father, you know, both his parents were born in the latter part of the 19th century. Uh, his, as you said, his father came from Barbados, from Bridgetown, Barbados. His mother came from Puerto Rico. Uh, his father came uh, to the United States in 1903 and settled here uh, in the area of what became uh, known as Lincoln Center, but at that time it was called San Juan Hill. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of, there were West Indian immigrants there. Uh, later on, uh, rivals from the South, like uh, Thelonious Monk and his family arrived there. Mm -hmm. So they uh, lived at uh, 63rd Street. His father was uh, first a shipping clerk. Uh, that's what he did for, for office, a business in downtown Manhattan. And then later on, he worked for a company that supplied uh, uh, drafting equipment, uh, art supplies, and uh, he would bring some of these supplies home uh, for Abel to practice and, and then encourage him to do so. Uh, Abel also came from a very uh, uh, artistic family in terms of his brothers and sisters. Uh, his brother, Edgar, or known as René, uh, became a pianist who later on became uh, the musical director for the Fifth Dimension and prior to that was internationally known as the pianist and arranger for the Delta Rhythm Boys who were very popular both in the United States and, and abroad. Uh, his uh, sister, older sister, Dollarina, uh, she was in fashion design. Uh, his other sister, or uh, was, was Frances, she was uh, dance, and uh, that was his focus, and then of course, Abel with the art. Wow, so this is something that was encouraged. Artistic family. All of the arts that I've spoken with that are still alive, I mentioned how, but how technically proficient he was in terms of how he executed his works and how he concentrated on um, sort of the ancient or, or Renaissance forms mm -hmm. uh, in, in his work. Let's talk about some of those images. Um, uh, for example, the, the pyramids. Did he, did he ever mention how important the pyramids were to him in terms of that? The pyramids were very important to uh, Bell. I would say that for him, the, the pyramid was an ideal form. Uh, he once told me that it was for him an ideal form the way that Mount Saint-Victoire in Provence was for uh, Cezanne. He also referred to it as a closed form and yet one that contained energy, the energy of light, of possibilities. And so there's a very spiritual connection with pyramids. Let's look at uh, Don Mirage, done in 1975, which seems to depict exactly what you were saying about him in terms of those two major images in his work. Well, no question about it. You can see here in the pyramid that it has beams of light that are radiating out uh, from it. This is an example of that kind of contained energy and its release, you know, which makes his work so powerful, so compelling. And it, the different layering uh, uh, layering aspects of this particular composition further adds to the sense of, of receding depth. And even though there are certain aspects of the work that tend to project, you also have the layering which allows you to, to reach further beyond the surface to something, that ideal that he talked about. Mm -hmm. And yet it remains something that is unattainable. Likewise, in this work here, uh, which is the, where the, the pyramid seems to be even higher mm -hmm. in terms of things, and then this sort of um, subtlety of, of the um, horizon lines and the coloration, just very, very subtly, very um, um, intricately, the way in which the, the different levels of these horizon lines and then the horizon skies yes. kind of join one another. So you have the unattainable, you have the, I, the ideal, which is something that one reaches for, you have the multiple layers, you have the ideal of the human form, you have in this particular case... And the contemplation of the human form of other things because you see these kinds of dreamlike 
things that you explained to me once mm -hmm. about how he did these these kind of little uh, uh, um, I call them dreams mm -hmm. or, or image uh, or kind of ideas that are formulating as this person is sitting here uh, thinking about something. These particular uh, orbs of light that you see here were what Abel referred to as thought bubbles. Mm. So you're, you're so right on the money there. I'm, yes. I'm, 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 getting, I'm getting there, right? <laughs> and uh, these thought bubbles uh, contain light energy, as he said. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there's a spiritual, again, a spiritual component you know, related to these. And he felt that this is something that everyone has. And so you see these forms emanating from various figures throughout many of his uh, works of art. Abel, in, in terms of his demeanor, you know, was a rather, say, laid-back uh, kind oh, of yeah. individual. Yes. yes. Yeah. He, he didn't um, express himself in very loud ways or anything. He was a rather calm sort of person, but beneath the surface, there was a great deal of energy and, and rigor and uh, this is something that I think is reflected here. Mm -hmm. Because you have that energy, the, the person has a certain a detachment, a meditative uh, quality, and yet this, uh, this energy is rising up. And as you said, it's being released mm -hmm. through the pyramid. And you know, I asked uh, Abel one time, I said, you know, these wonderful little orbs of light, this light area that you, that you speak about, how in the world did you create that? And so uh, this was during a time where I had a retrospective for him at the University of Pittsburgh. And uh, he went, he had some wash. You see, he would always travel with uh, his paint set. Oh, really? Yes, he always traveled with his paint set. He would uh, do sketches, what he called watercolor sketches or wash sketches. And so he went to the wash and he put his thumb in it and he pressed it on paper. So each of these are actually thumbprints. Of his. Or with his fingers, yes. I can see it. Yeah. I can see it. I can see the, the kind of the, uh, the imprint so, in some cases. And so the thing is, is that he showed me a variety of ways of using improvisation, mm -hmm. of using these uh, outside the box techniques in order to, not just simply with a brush, mm -hmm. you know, but with, with his hands, you know, to create some of these effects, using a rule to create these multiple layers, which is very rich and, and Sensuous. Steve, uh, tell us a little bit about some of the travels and places that Abel studied and taught. Well, one of the places, of course, was the Soviet Union. Uh, in 1961, uh, he had an opportunity to travel uh, under the auspices of the United States State Department to uh, the Soviet Union, to not only Russia, but also to Central Asia. Uh, the purpose was, of course, to teach about art, uh, teach about the various aspects of contemporary art. Mm -hmm. And when he traveled to places uh, like Samarkand, Bukhara, he started seeing people dressing in robes. Uh, he started seeing, this is where the sense of exoticism, as he put it, began to emerge in his work. And you can see it in terms of how this figure is clothed uh, with a cloth uh, uh, over his head, That's but, right. but also it also just depicts religion, you know, other than Western religions like Muslim, uh, the Muslim religion, yes. uh, also uh, some of the statuary uh, and, and 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 iconography and icons that were used in, in looks looks like some type of worship of some kind. Yes, you know, uh, so you really do see. The, the, the emergence of Africa, like you say, but also the, the diversity of different religions and architecture appearing in the work, yes. which is uh, a, a, another combination as we step back and look at this work here, uh, where we see the classical form, Greek or Roman form there, but also an African uh, mass here on the table with the universal symbol of the egg here and the column and with like an orb over the column, like an orb of light, and then that classic ideal form of the pyramid, and here we go, a, a kind of depiction of one aspect of Michelangelo's Sistine ceiling, the creation of man uh, that's, on, uh, that's in the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican, mm -hmm. and also one of the, the kind of awakening sibyls uh, and, and sages that also are depicted in the uh, Sistine Chapel ceiling. 
I'd like to point out, though, that uh, from the period of time of the Soviet Union, uh, when he traveled over there, he began to see the possibilities of bringing uh, people from North Africa and then later on Eastern Africa into his work. So many of the masks that you see here are derived from images that he saw, uh, not personally, but through various catalogs of people in Eastern Africa and the way in which they adorned themselves. Mm -hmm. So he's bringing a fusion of the Western classical ideals and even going back further into ancient Egypt because many of the ancient Greeks, you know, look to Egypt. He's finding a way to link those Western classical ideals back to Africa in many and interesting ways. And discovering all that. This, this figure looks like it's, he's discovering these, this kind of uh, trail of history that you just described. Yes. And, and how that, that in, in it of itself is an illumination. And a, and, and, and a way of looking at the world anew, even though from classical forms. That's correct. And because Bill, quite frankly, he's discovering something about himself. He was saying that sometimes he was asked why does his work not depict more uh, directly yes. his African-American experience. Mm -hmm. Well, I think in this work here, it does. Yes. Because it shuts, this uh, shows a young person with the afro of the style of the of the 60s and 70s. Yeah, as you say, he does, he has an afro, and, and Abel at this time had an afro, but the orbs of light suggest those thought bubbles or those pieces of light energy that are beginning to manifest themselves from his hands. Mm -hmm. It's as though it's in his hands. It's in his hands. Yes. His future is in his hands. Exactly. The idea that light is emitting from his hands suggests not only the possibility of, of, of being, a, being able to be an agent, you know, of change. Mm -hmm. But also it suggests that it, it, it is an affirmation, mm -hmm. you know, of those spiritual qualities uh, that allows him to move forward into a, whatever situation presents itself. One of the fascinating things about this particular piece, which really encapsulates a lot of his interest, is that it combines a Greco-Roman type figure on the left uh, with an African figure, perhaps from East Africa, uh, on the right. And this fusion again underscores his ability to synthesize various cultural uh, influences. Uh, you see the columns, of course, and uh, some orbs uh, over in the lower left and right. Sort of encasing it. Yes. On both yes. sides. That's right. So, so this, this, is, this is all that I represent. This is all of our history. Uh, and, and at the same time, you know, it has the strength of the columns and the orbs behind it and in front of it. You so really get a sense of structure. You get a sense of timelessness, of classicism. Shortly before uh, the year of his death, as he was working on this particular piece, um, he began to reflect about life and also the, unfortunately, the passing of many of his friends. And so this sense of reflection uh, is manifested, I think, very much in this work. He has the ideals, the, the sense of, of the uh, geometric forms that I spoke of earlier and how they were important to him, these underlying geometric forms that exist throughout nature. And you see it. Yes. You see it. Yes. Yeah. And at the same time, you also have the ideal of the human form, as you, you know, discussed before. Uh, but I see this also as him not only containing and embodying these primordial elements, if you will, uh, and the sacred stones, uh, but he is also at the same time passing through them mm -hmm. and getting closer toward that ideal. Mm -hmm. You know, although somewhat unattainable, you know, by his depiction, yet emitting a kind of energy, a light.